Today we're talking about why the metric system rocks. Now, it's hard for me to not get on my soapbox when we're talking about this because there are so many reasons why America should not be using the English system anymore. It's also known as the standard system, by the way. You know how many people in the world, how many countries in the world actually use the standard system? I think it's two. Us and some other little country somewhere. Um, Everyone else in the world uses the metric system for measurement. And there might be a reason why um, the uh, other kids in other countries are faster at picking up how to measure things. Because the standard system is really, really difficult to memorize. And that's what I'm going to show you here today. So I'll get off my soapbox and we'll go ahead and I'll show you some things. So let's start with the English system. Well, first of all, let me just say it's called the English system uh, because that was a style of measurement that England started. Um, It all started kind of randomly with the king, the king of England, Uh, the word foot is actually a measurement of the size of his foot. Um, The inch was the uh, the end of his thumb, the knuckle to the end of his thumb. That was an inch. And so every time you had a new king, all your measurements in your entire country would change. It was crazy. I mean, you would have to redo all of your foot system, uh, like feet change sizes. Um, So... The English people, they started this system. That's why it's called the English system. We, of course, came from England. Uh, You know, America was born out of England uh, when we revolted against them in the American Revolution. And we kept their system. Now, it was a number of years ago now, but the English people now use the metric system. They thought that system, their English system, was kind of silly. A lot of numbers to memorize, lots of words to memorize. And they decided, let's forget it and let's move on. Uh, Let's do the metric system like everybody else because we want to be a part of a global community. Uh, We want to be able to talk numbers with everybody and measurements with everybody else. So we went, they went to uh, metrics. We, uh, arrogant Americans, decided, no, we're keeping the English system, even though we didn't like the English people, uh, you know, because we revolted against them. But let's, let's move on. All right, so let's start with the English system. Obviously, the first number we use with most things is the number one. And you'll see that's pretty standard everywhere. You count by ones. That's no big deal. Now, let's talk about baking. So volume. We talk about volume of uh, liquids and such. And when you have that, um, you have a cup, one cup. So the word cup, you go into the next level up is quartz. Does anybody know... um, How many cups are there in a quart? Well, there's two. Okay, now, while I go through these numbers, I want you to be honest with yourself. Do you really know how many there are? Or are you just saying, oh yeah, I knew that? Because I'll be honest, I had to look up a couple of these numbers as I as I go along here. I had to look them up first because goodness knows you don't memorize hardly any of these. All right. So there's two, there's actually, I should have started with pints. Pints is like what you guys drink with your milk is a pint. So it takes two pints to make a cup. There's two cups to make a a quart. Okay. I'll go ahead and write the words too. Two pints, two cups. Whoops. There we go. How many quarts are there in a gallon? Gallon's the next size up. Well, you'd think because of the pattern, two and two, that it should be two, but it's not. It's four. So it takes four quarts to make a gallon. Now, if you counted half gallon, then it'd be two, 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 and two, because it takes two quarts to make a half gallon and two half gallons to make a gallon. But half gallon is not really a measurement. (laughs) A gallon is. All right. So there you go. We got some numbers. At least we had a repeat of the number two. That's nice. But all the words are different. So let's move to uh, weight, when we measure weight. So does anybody know how many ounces there are in a pound? Well, there's 16 ounces, I'll just abbreviate that for you, in a pound. So that's uh, another number, uh, as you can see, a different number than all the others. Um, How many pounds are there? The next measurement from pound is a ton. There's no, no measurement in between. 
it just goes straight from a pound from ounces, which is a little tiny measurement, to a pound, which is a medium measurement, to this huge measurement of a ton. So what's a what's a ton? And most of you probably knew that that it was oop oop, sorry. Do 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 so it's 2,000 pounds to make a ton. All right, so that's at least a round number, but weird, because it goes from 16 ounces in a pound to 2,000 pounds. There's nothing in between. That's kind of crazy. And honestly, you probably have no idea how big a ton is or how heavy it really is. Um, it, it, it's hard to imagine that as a, as a person. So, all right. Now, let's go to the easy measurements. These are ones that you guys probably do know. Uh, so let's start with inches. How many inches in a foot? Yep, you're right. It's 12. 12 inches in a foot. So we go to the next measurement. How many feet in a yard? Yeah, it's three. Three feet in a yard. So, so far, let me just look at our list of numbers. We have a one, a two, a two. Well, at least the two is repeated. Four, 16, 2,000, 12, and three. So far, nothing really makes sense. I mean, look at all these random numbers, it seems like. For a while, it was all even numbers, and then we have three. Three feet make up a yard. So that's kind of weird. Uh, I'm not sure where that comes from. I'm sure you could find out, but uh, it just seems like it's kind of random. So now, from a foot, from a yard, we, we just said it was uh, three feet in a yard. How many yards are there in a mile? A mile is the next measurement uh, in length. Does anybody know how many yards are on a mile? No, nobody knows. You know why nobody knows? Because nobody ever tries to remember that. Nobody cares about yards. We don't hardly ever use a yard. So how many feet are there in a mile? Now, some of you probably know that, but not many of you. Usually when I ask a whole classroom, about two kids know how many feet there are in a mile. You can all guess, but the number is actually this gigantic number. 5,200 80 feet are in a mile. So another just randomly huge number. I'm sure it has some significance somewhere, but that's kind of lost knowledge. You ask anybody how, why there's 5,280 feet, and I would say 90 times out of 100, maybe even 95 times out of 100, nobody's going to know what, why. So, all right, let's go to temperature, because temperature is important too. We use the Fahrenheit scale. Okay, and you guys think of it usually as uh, you know water, right? You think about how hot or cold it is outside, uh, and you think about um, the freezing and melting of water. Uh, so we're going to go with the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water because, uh, believe it or not, in science, most things when we talk about matter, most things revolve around the water. Uh, you're made up of water. I'm made up of water. We need to drink water to to survive. We talk about changing states of matter. We talk. We think about you know temperature with that. So does anybody know what is the freezing point of water? Yeah, most of you guys probably know that it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit for freezing. Okay, now, who knows the boiling point of water? Yeah, I'll just keep waiting because I'm pretty sure you don't know. Yeah, well, the total, the number for that is 212 degrees Fahrenheit for boiling water. Again, seems like pretty random numbers. Now, again, I'm, I'm sure the Fahrenheit scale has some basis somewhere. I'm... I would bet that there's a reason why uh, it's scaled the way it is. Um, and it's probably super interesting. But it's kind of random when you look at this whole list. So take a look at all these numbers. We have numbers all over the place. We have 1, 2, 2, 4, 16, 2,000, 12, 3, 5,280, 32, and 212. Completely different numbers for every system. So right here, we have volume. Here, we have weight. Here, we have linear distance, or measuring in a line, length, and width, and height. And then here, we have temperature. Okay? Now, with all of that done and said, let's take a look at the metric system. 
And again, this is why the metric system rocks. Okay, The metric system uses base 10, which means we use numbers 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, so on. We also use little numbers like 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and it goes that, in that direction too. But it's always multiples of 10, times 10 or divided by 10. So let's take a look. The numbers we use. We have one meter, and that's uh, about, I mean, just for your size-wise, it's about, about a yard. It's actually like 39 inches. So one meter is, is a normal size for measuring um, objects. Now you can go uh, down, and we use, there are 100 centimeters in a meter, and there are 1,000 millimeters in a meter, okay? We can also go up, uh, believe it or not. You can go, um, usually, uh, I mean, you could go to 10, you can go to 100. We won't be doing that in fifth grade. You'll probably, you'll learn that in eighth grade, I think. Um, there's deca, that means 10. Um, we're going to go straight up to 1,000, and that's kilo. So a kilometer or a kilometer, depending on how you want to do it. And that's kind of the, the measurement for like the mile, even though it's way shorter than a mile, um, the kilometer. So if you look at your parents' speedometer on their car, you'll see the big numbers are miles per hour. But underneath that, on the inside dial, there's usually bigger numbers, and those will be kilometers per hour. Okay? So we use those measurements. And those are the only measurements for anything. So this is linear measurement where we're talking about le measuring length of something. If you want to use, um, so meter is length. If you want to talk about volume, so like liquids, you talk about liter okay? And if you want to talk about mass, you talk about grams. Oh yeah, and temperature. Temperature is oh, temp is Celsius. And there's a guy whose name is, his last name was Celsius, and he was the one that came up with the temperature. So let me just tell you here, if you, uh, you use these same uh, measurements, so you still would use milli for a meter, so it'd be a millimeter is one thousandth of a meter. You could use milliliter, which we'll be using in class to measure volumes. Uh, and that's one thousandth of a liter. You can use milligram, which medicine comes in milligrams, and that would be one thousandth of a gram. Uh, you can use centi on any of these numbers. You can use kilo on any of these numbers, and it means the same thing. You only have to memorize the prefixes and the base, base words. That's all you have to do. And by the way, we didn't talk about Celsius, but Celsius makes a lot of sense too because freezing, they decided to say water freezes at zero Celsius. What do you think it boils at? <laughs> yeah, you got it. It's 100 degrees Celsius. So they just broke it up that way. The coolest thing about this is that um, the meter, they came up with a standardized reason for the reason why a meter had to be a meter in length. And that was because they took the, the uh, equator that goes around the Earth, and they took the North Pole, and they got the distance between the equator and the North Pole. They took that distance, and they divided it by a 1,000. Then they divided that by, uh, or divided it by 10, I'm sorry. Then they divided it by 10, 10 more times. That distance came out to be one meter, or maybe it was a million times. They divided it by a million times, and it came out to be one meter, and that's what the length was. They called that a meter, and then they just started dividing things up. They divided it up by a hundred, a ten, and uh, they kept doing it by tens. It was crazy, but it, it's the, the planet. The planet Earth doesn't change size. So unlike the English system where it was the uh, king's you know, body and stuff, it doesn't change. All right, so there's my rant and rave about why the metric system is better. So thank you very much for listening, and continue your educational purposes.